Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Juan Solo here with A-Squad Gaming. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down some more weapons from Ghost Recon Wildlands. So we are going to be going over all of the submachine guns today and uh, kind of talking about them in depth a little bit and just kind of giving you guys a full list of what's going to be in the game at launch. So the first submachine gun we're going to be talking about here is the MP5. And the MP5 is basically the weapon you start out the game with. And this one is the only one you actually were able to use in the closed beta or the open beta um, and actually take it into the gunsmith so as you can see i modified it just a little bit but uh, overall most of the most of the submachine guns are kind of a lower damage than your assault rifles but these things have a lot higher rate of fire noise reduction is all the way up on this thing so this thing is a very very stealthy weapon if you put a suppressor on it not many people are going to be able to hear it even with the suppressor even at point blank range um handling pretty much going to be high on all the submachine guns but overall it's it's the generic one obviously it's the first one that you get and uh it's it's not a bad it's not a bad submachine gun it's pretty average um to, to say the least so next let's see if i can get this right here there we go we're going to be talking about the p90 so the p90 submachine gun very very high handling obviously submachine gun actually a decent damage for a submachine gun decent rate of fire noise reduction isn't quite where i would want it to be for um for a submachine gun but uh, it might be actually because I don't have a silencer on it right now which is why the other one was very very high that's probably why but uh, this gun it's been in a lot of different other video games and uh, it's it's kind of like a really kind of run and gun very close range kind of a weapon very low range high rate of fire um, so, um, decent submachine gun very unique looking submachine gun especially with the magazine that pops out of the top but uh, overall decent submachine gun next we're gonna be talking about the PP 19 um, I actually did pick this up a few times in the beta and played with it um, it's it's average you know I'm more of an assault rifle player myself but uh, it's pretty average um, a pretty low rate of fire for a submachine gun pretty decent handling damage wasn't too bad accuracy was a little bit of a problem um, you add the foregrip on it, it still was still a little bit of a problem but uh, overall not a bad submachine gun um, very, very good uh, close range, you know, really close range. This would be more of a CQB, a close quarters combat weapon um, would probably be the best way to use this weapon if you're going inside buildings and stuff like that. Next, we have the SR-635. This is a, I'm kind of surprised this isn't in the assault rifle class because this behaves a lot more like an assault rifle. The damage is very, very good. Accuracy, pretty decent. Handling is pretty good. Range is where it gets you. This is where you can tell that it's a submachine gun. Um, but uh, it's still a decent weapon. Um, it kind of reminds me like of an M27 or, or somewhere around that. Even kind of looks like the SIG 226 that's in this game. But uh, rate of fire, very, very low for a submachine gun. This is going to be a very interesting gun to use to see exactly what the best way to use it is going to be. Um, but uh, I'll have to do some testing with it and only time will tell. But we'll get into that at a later date. But overall, it's it's a strange submachine gun being the fact that it has a low rate of fire um, and it has a very very high damage so it's going to be an interesting one to use so next the mp7 this has been in a lot of video games um, across call of duty uh, rainbow six ghost recon um i still remember using this a lot i believe it was in rainbow six vegas 2 i think it was that i used this quite a bit but uh pretty low damage accuracy not too bad you know typical for a submachine gun but all handling is peaked this is a very very good weapon for handling um rate of fire one of the highest rate of fires in the submachine gun class it definitely puts bullets down range very very quickly noise reduction the noise reduction is actually quite high for being the fact that it does not have a suppressor on it so i'm a little bit surprised about that um very very short range because it has such a high rate of fire it's going to have a low range but uh, overall it's a pretty good weapon. This is a good weapon for extreme uh, close quarters. Um, you're going to basically melt anybody within, you know, first, you know, few feet or whatever. Very close range weapon. It's going to be very, very lethal. Next, we have the 9mm CI. So this is a very, very unique weapon. It kind of reminds me of, like the old school Type 100 um, that was in a few Call of Duties. And also, I believe it was kind of a variant of that was in Battlefield 1. has the magazine that you pull out of the side and then the perforated barrel down at the end. And uh, it's a very unique weapon. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to use this. I'm not really a submachine gun player, and it's, I'm not sure exactly what all attachments you can put on this. But um, it's not bad. It, it looks unique, but uh, overall, this definitely isn't going to be the weapon for me. Noise reduction is not bad. Handling is decent. Everything else is pretty average across the board. I'm kind of surprised that the rate of fire isn't a little bit higher, but uh, that's just the way this weapon is. It's definitely a very old-school weapon. Next, we have the 9x19 vsn so this kind of reminds me i'm trying to think how i want to put it it sort of looks like an ak74u in a way 
and then it also I'm trying to remember what it is I can't remember what it what it actually but uh, look at all the perforations in uh, the basically the firing mechanism all the way down the barrel and stuff like that um, handling very good rate of fire pretty average damage is not bad for a submachine gun it's pretty it's pretty good for damage accuracy could be a little bit higher but uh, I would probably just throw a foregrip on there and it would probably increase that pretty well very low penetration but uh, noise reduction is not bad being the fact that it does not have a suppressor on it yet this is a weapon that I might use occasionally in certain situations um, just because honestly I think it looks pretty badass the way that everything is laid out on it so uh, but uh, pretty average you know it's definitely not the best submachine gun in my opinion in the class next we have the MPX I actually had the ability to pick this up a few times and use it. I love the way this thing sounds. It just it sounds really really cool. That's one thing that uh, Ubisoft and Red Storm did right. Is all the weapons sound really really good and they fit in this game very very well. So handling pretty good for a submachine gun. Obviously it's up there towards the top. Rate of fire is pretty high. Noise reduction is quite high for being the fact that there is not a suppressor on it yet. And as you can see, there's a free free floating barrel, which kind of makes me wonder why the fact that the accuracy is not higher. But uh, it's not a bad weapon. You know, like I said, I picked it up a few times, played around with it. It's not a very good weapon for decent, you know, long-range engagements, obviously, because it's a submachine gun. But overall, it's not bad. It's a pretty decent weapon. Next, we have the PSG, which kind of reminds me of the M4. M4 carbine, just a little bit shorter barrel, obviously. But uh, accuracy, pretty decent for a submachine gun. Handling's pretty good. Rate of fire, pretty good. Also with noise reduction. This could almost act as an assault rifle um, if you throw... I'm not sure if you can actually throw long barrels on submachine guns or not. Um, I actually, that's that's terrible work on my part. I did not check that because uh, I don't really play with submachine guns. But uh, this weapon, you know, it it's probably not going to be one that I use, as you can see, like another free floating barrel. Um, but uh, like an M4 sort of variant, I guess you could say, sort of kind of looks like the front mount of an ACR as well. But uh, not a bad gun. Probably one of the better ones for damage in the submachine gun class. So next we have the Scorpion Evo 3. So this one, if I'm going to be using a CQB weapon or, you know, close quarters, stuff like that, this is going to be my go-to because the rate of fire is almost all the way up. Range is pretty decent. Handling's good. Accuracy is not bad for a submachine gun. Damage, it's not the best. But uh, I use this in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 quite a bit. I believe I dabbed with it. I think I can't remember what other game it was in. I want to say it was in one of the Rainbow Six games. I can't remember. But uh, this gun is so much fun to use. And uh, I actually really look forward to being able to put it on or at least find it on the ground so I can hear what it sounds like. I'm really curious to see exactly what this thing sounds like. But honestly, looks cool. It looks a little bit sort of futuristic with the way the layout is and especially up point, uh, past the front sight post. But uh, I'm really looking forward to using this weapon in the game just to kind of see exactly how it works. Uh, next, we have the Vector 45 ACP. Very, highest rate of fire in the submachine gun class. Very good handling. Accuracy is not bad. Noise reduction, again, not too bad. Um, used this in a lot of the Call of Duty games um, and a couple other uh, Rainbow Six. I think it was Rainbow Six or Tom Clancy games. Um, pretty good weapon. Very unique design, the way it looks with basically the entire gun being encased like that. But uh, not a bad weapon. It's definitely not the best one out of the submachine gun class, but it does have the highest rate of fire, and it will definitely shred people in close quarters. Next, we have the Experimento Hash 42, which is basically the same thing. I'm trying to remember what one is that was. It the 9mm C1. It's basically a variant of the 9mm C1. This is an epic weapon, or um, an exotic weapon that you get from one of the bosses that drops. Really, in my personal opinion, probably one of the ugliest guns I've ever seen in my entire life. But uh, you cannot mod this. This comes as is, so you get an iron sight with a laser sight and a crazy looking wooden foregrip. But, uh, you know, it's definitely not one of the prettiest guns in the game, but uh, it's probably useful nonetheless. And then we have the Mendeleev. I think that's how I spell it, Mendeleev, which is a variant of the... Um, 45 ACP. Um, really cool looking. It has the skull front mount there with the magazine coming out of it. That honestly looks so, so, so cool. Comes with a red dot sight, also with a built-in suppressor. So honestly, this might be a weapon that I use. Also, the front foregrip there has it on there. It's going to be a very accurate weapon. Um, rate of fire, noise reduction all the way up. Handling almost all the way up. Range isn't bad. Damage isn't bad. So this is a weapon that I might throw on from time to time just because it looks really, really cool. And it's going to be a very uh, dynamic weapon. You can use it in a lot of different situations. Um, next, we have the Residue which is um, the P119, I think is what it's called. Um, just another variant of that. Comes with a sight. Um, I want to say it has an extended mag on it, is what it looks like. I might be wrong. But uh, just a different variant of that weapon. So that, you know, not too much different than the other one. And then we have this one, the UY, exclamation point. Um, folding stock, sort of like a, an ACOG scope thing on top. I can't remember exactly what that sight's called. Laser sight. 
you know, handling's good, accuracy's, I'm surprised the accuracy is really that high with the folding stock and everything on it, but uh, noise reduction is not bad, rate of fire, average, but uh, like I said, you cannot mod this weapon, but, uh, you know, a very diverse, wide variety of weapons, but I do have to say, probably out of all the weapons in the submachine gun class, that um, either the Scorpion Evo or even the uh, the PSG is uh, probably one of the better weapons to use like that also the vector 45 acp but that is pretty much all guys that is all the submachine guns and uh, that is pretty much going to be all for the video guys if you guys enjoyed it you guys are pumped for this game to come out on march 7th make sure to drop a like on the video also if you guys are new around here make sure to subscribe for more ghost recon wildlands content i'm going to be covering a lot of stuff coming up to the launch of this game and post launch so make sure you guys slap that subscribe button so you do not miss any of that thank you so much for watching guys and i will catch you guys later peace out